I'm very pleased to have the chance to speak here on behalf of the Department of Energy Office of Science. So I have the title slide, Quantum Information Science in the DOE Office of Science. And we'll, we'll go into various programs, including the National Quantum Information Science Research Centers, the Quantum Internet, uh, the core research programs in the program offices of the Office of Science, and then briefly wrap up. So this is, this is really the big picture of QIS in the Department of Energy Office of Science. You see the, the six program offices of the Office of Science. Uh, advanced scientific computing research on the left, then nuclear physics, basic energy sciences, high energy physics, fusion energy sciences, and biological and environmental research. And I know this conference is emphasizing quantum computing. You see that it pretty well spans all of the offices except for BER at the right. And they're supporting technologies at the bottom. And along with that are the, the Department of Energy user facilities, which will play an extremely important role that we will talk about going forward. So let me start with the National Quantum Info Information Science Research Centers, which you've probably heard quite a bit about. That uh, was an outgrowth of the Quantum in National Quantum Initiative Act in the lower right corner there, in which Congress dictated that the Department of Energy should make uh, awards to two to five in, uh, national QIS research centers at up to $25 million per year each for, uh, for five years. You see the schedule for the, the competition that took place the centers were announced in August of 2020 and now are beginning to ramp up their activities. I'll talk about some of the details going forward that are, that are on the slide there. The five awards are shown here um, in alphabetical order of the labs leading them, Argonne, Brookhaven, Fermi Lab, uh, Lawrence Berkeley Lab, and Oak Ridge. In the center, you see seven attributes that successful proposals were expected to satisfy. Uh, they're pretty much self-explanatory, perhaps except for QIS ecosystem stewardship, which is a criterion having to do with uh, interactions with other centers and with other parts of the national ecosystem uh, funded by other agencies and with um, the contributions of the private sector. I'll give more details about each center um, in the next few slides. Um, the portfolio was to satisfy these criteria that um, were uh, included in the funding opportunity announcement. On, on the left, you see the science and technology innovation chain uh, going from fundamental science at the bottom uh, all the way to technology and applications at the top. A, a, an, a responsive proposal was supposed to uh, significantly involve at least three of those levels, including fundamental science. On the right, you see complementary technical areas of interest, and a proposal was supposed to significantly address at least two of those five. Uh, the, the proposals that were successful uh, you know, easily exceeded those criteria. But you can see that the com quantum computing is a significant part of this activity and it spans much of the other areas of quantum information science. So now I'll go through the five um, centers briefly in turn. Um, QNEXT is led by Argonne, uh, director David Ashlam. You see the partners there on the right, uh, the, the laboratory partners at the top, the uh, academic partners in the middle, and the industrial partners at the bottom. Uh, the scope of this center is, has to do with quantum interconnects um, and demonstrating you know, computer, uh, communication links, networks of sensors, and simulation test beds. And another key piece of it is establishment of quantum foundries. Their plan is to establish two foundries at Argonne Lab and SLAC Laboratory. The Co-Design Center for Quantum Advantage at Brookhaven National Laboratory, uh, directed by Steve Gervin. Again, you see the, the major partners on the top 
of the right and associated partners uh, below that. And you note the industrial uh, contribution from IBM and the other participation of Pacific Northwest Lab as well as Brookhaven and then the universities. So the, the C squared QA uh, is, concentrates heavily on quantum computing and is looking at solid state and superconducting qubit platforms. And they have this goal of multiplicatively improving by a factor of 10 in three aspects of quantum computing, which are shown there under the scope. Multiplicatively, meaning they are seeking a 1,000 fold improvement in performance uh, when those are all uh, multiplied together. SQMS is led by Fermilab. And again, you have the major partners there at the top uh, Rigetti from industry, Northwestern from academia, and uh, DOE Ames Lab and NASA Ames, uh, and then the associated partners at the bottom. Their emphasis is primarily on uh, decoherence mechanisms and, and superconducting platforms. And you, know, you see the other aspects in it there, you know, quantum systems for computing and sensing, and some foundry capabilities and quantum test beds. The Quantum Systems Accelerator is led by uh, Lawrence Berkeley Lab and the partners there on the right, Director Irfan Siddiqui of LBNL. Uh, they are oriented toward basic research and also engineering and applications. So th they're looking at a multi multiple platforms, neutral atoms, trapped ions, and superconducting circuits. And they are looking to deliver prototypes that will have you know, technological implications uh, coming out of that center. And finally, the Quantum Science Center uh, from Oak Ridge National Laboratory, directed by David Dean. Uh, the, the most notable part of the scope that stands out from others, perhaps, is that they're looking at um, topological materials, you know, topological qubits in particular. Um, and you know, among the partners on the right, um, you see uh, Microsoft, which uh, has a significant activity in that area. So that is, that's the quantum information science centers. Now, um, how they fit perhaps into a larger picture uh, in this quantum internet activity that is coming, is coming in the near future. Uh, the upper right of the slide, you see that uh, the goal is to establish a secure, reliable quantum internet backbone. And among other things, it would connect the quantum research science quantum Q, the national QIS research centers that we just talked about, um, as well as the labs. They're, um, this is seeking to secure uh, communications for the labs using the laws of quantum physics, in particular, the properties of individual photons. And so that's a major reason why DOE would be, is appropriate to be significantly involved in this. On the left of the top, at the bottom of that panel, it mentions the Quantum Internet Blueprint Workshop that took place in February of 2020, in, um, led by Brookhaven. And that, that formulated a plan for uh, the Quantum Internet, which is viewed as one of the facilitators for implementing the National Quantum Initiative Act. So the next slide says more about the, the blueprint. The report. Uh, whose link is there at the bottom, uh, was released in July of this year. And there was a major press conference at the University of Chicago to, uh, to make that announcement. And, and the, the report formulated uh, the four priority research directions that you see on the left and the milestones that you see on the right. And there are you know, many familiar subjects that come up in this, uh, including um, entanglement, um, quantum repeaters and so on. Uh, but it's, we're viewing it as part of this overall ecosystem that, uh, that is, will play an important role in relation to the, the QIS centers and other parts. This is, the activity has really 
it, it's really on the drawing board at this point. So you can be looking for future developments. So next, I want to talk about the core research activities that take place in the program offices of the DOE Office of Science. This is complementary to the larger scale activities from the centers and the quantum internet. You can see th this is a web page in the, the DOE web pages. And the, the top link there above the yellow arrow for QIS centers will take you to information about the centers that we just talked about. Where the arrow is, is pointing to uh, program office pages. And the, lo the lower part of the slide is what you find there. And the, the red arrows will take you to the pages of the individual program offices, um, OSCAR, BES, HEP, and NP. And what you'll find on those pages is in the yellow box at the bottom. Uh, that's where to look for funding opportunities, uh, past funding opportunities, press releases, award lists, and so on. Uh, so that's, that's the source to go to for seeing what's happening in QIS at DOE. So I'll go over the offices in turn uh, very briefly. Um, quantum computing in, in the Office of Advanced Scientific Computing Research. The, um, the activities are in the bubbles on the right. Uh, the top bubble, the, the principal activity there is quantum test beds for science. Uh, those are five-year awards that were made in fiscal year 2018. So they, will, they are still ongoing. Um, in the bottom of the green, the first green rectangle, you see um, access to current quantum, quantum hardware through the Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility. That's another piece of access for the community that needs to be noted. Uh, the second bubble on the right is the quantum computing research, uh, accelerated research in quantum computing, or ARC as an acronym. And those were major projects that started in fiscal 2019 one year ago. So they're still ongoing five-year projects, uh, similarly for the quantum networks. And at the bottom for completeness are some earlier computing-oriented activities that really led into the accelerated research in quantum computing. So I will briefly talk about, uh, present a slide on each of those uh, sets of activities. Here's the quantum test beds for science. And there, there are two of them. Again, these are uh, they were made as five-year awards starting in uh, fiscal 2019, and uh, sorry, 2018. One of them is at Sandia National Lab, the one on the left, and you can see that it is a resource for ion trap quantum computing. The one on the right is at Lawrence Berkeley Lab, and it's a resource for uh, superconducting platforms for quantum computing. And as you see at the bottom of the slide, uh, these are resources that are available to the community. And this shows you how you can um, touch base with them. Uh, the ARC activity um, is the, really the current one that is a significant investment in quantum computing by, by the OSCAR office. And you can see these were uh, five-year awards made in F fiscal year 2019, so they, they're going to continue through 2023. Um, and you can see the brief description there of what is involved with those. Quantum networks, uh, a similar timetable. And this is, of course, relevant to the quantum internet, ultimately. That's what's in the, the bottom of the left-hand white box in the center of the slide. Um, so that, again, gives you an idea of how this fits into the, the larger picture. And finally, for, um, for advanced scientific computing research, these were the quantum computing activities that really uh, led, um, laid groundwork for the ARC activity. And these were awards that were made um, earlier than the, the ARC awards that we just uh, cited. OK, uh, so let's move on to the other offices, um, Basic Energy Sciences, BES. The quantum activities in BES were really based on two roundtable reports uh, that were done in late 2017. On the left, you have essentially uh, BES for quantum. You can think of it that way. 
think of the one on the right as quantum for BES. So, you know, BES for quantum, you can certainly imagine uh, basic research in areas like material science that's extremely important to uh, quantum systems. And on the right, uh, quantum computing could be extremely important for areas like quantum chemistry, you know, and, and other areas that are extremely challenged by uh, classical computing. So those reports uh, were the foundation of activities that came later. And these are the funding opportunity announcements over the past three fiscal years in BES. The uh, materials and chemical sciences research was announcements in fiscal 2018 and 2019. Uh, again, the, the first bullet under that is more or less you know, BES for quantum. And the second is quantum for BES. You can see there are a lot of awards, quite a bit of money was, has been invested. Um, and the FY, the, the 2018 awards, these are three year awards. So those are coming to the end of their cycle. So, you know, pending appropriations and planning, there could be a, a funding opportunity announcement in the offing. Um, the, lower, the lower activity on the slide is for research infrastructure at the nanoscale science research centers, which are among the BES uh, user facilities. Those are also three-year awards that were made in 2018, which are coming to the end of their cycle. And so there could be a recompetition coming there. The bottom of the slide notes that a subset of the energy frontier research centers or EFRCs have to do with quantum and are related to QIS. And there are six of those out of the 41 uh, active EFRCs. They will not, there will not be a, a, a competition for EFRCs in 2021. There will be one in 2022. Finally, the, the, the other two offices that I'm going to mention, high energy physics. Um, so they, their program mission is very, you know, basic physics as indicated here, some of the the topics that are well known, the ones that relate that are most relevant for quantum computing are the A, B, and C on the slide. Uh, C is pretty much um, quantum for HEP. The A and B have elements of both quantum for HEP and HEP for quantum. And the quantized awards have been made from funding opportunity announcements in fiscal 2018 and 2019. Uh, so this this is showing again some of the major topics uh, involved in in those awards. Um, again, the third and fourth bullets have aspects of HEP for quantum. You know, the rest is pretty much quantum for HEP. And finally, nuclear physics. Um, they've made some awards over the the three fiscal years, 2018 to 2020. 20 using the uh, open call for proposals that goes across the entire Office of Science with a small number of awards. And then a larger number of awards recently announced in late October um, for, for uh, investments arising out of a fiscal 2019 and 2020 funding opportunity announcement. And the next to last bullet indicates that you're looking at both, um, you know, you're looking at both um, NP for quantum and quantum for NP. So the last two slides, just to wrap up, um, at a high level, what the Office of Science is trying to do is large scale investments on the left, also core research next, and then combine that with community engagement and collaboration in particular with industry. And we've seen there are many opportunities there, especially in the national QIS um, research centers. And finally, at an even broader level, how DOE and the Office of Science fit into the national ecosystem and the national quantum strategy. Uh, here you have the elements of science, you have the elements of workforce, the CSGF acronym stands for Computational Science Graduate Fellowships. Um, you have industry, you have the access to the Oak Ridge uh, Leadership Computing Facility in the in the the white box there, and then finally the other 
uh, the other aspects of the entire system. So, uh, so again, I'll just, this is my final slide. I, I will wrap up by saying, again, I very much appreciate the opportunity to present, make this presentation on behalf of uh, the DOE Office of Science. Thank you.